Hi to everyone, myself Dr. T. Dhananjay Rao, working as assistant professor in the Department of Chemistry. Today I am going to teach about external treatment of water and ion exchange resin. Today I am going to teach external treatment of water and ion exchange resins. Before going to this, we should know about what is softening of water. What is the softening of water? See, the process of removing or reducing the hardness of water irrespective of whether it is temporary or permanent is called softening of water. The process of removing hardness causing salt from the water is called softening of water. Removing of hardness means removing of hardness causing salts or ions present in the water. What is meant by softening of water? Removing the hardness causing salts like Ca plus 2, magnesium plus 2 like that. Uh, these salts are present in the water. If you remove the these salts, the process is called softening of water. These salts are completely soluble in water. These magnesium and calcium, uh, hardness causing salts are completely soluble in water. So, we can't remove by simple filtration. These salts can't be removed by simple filtration. See, these are the hard water. Hard water nothing but the salts which contain calcium and magnesium salts. These are softened by different techniques. Okay, we will learn those things. Uh, what are the techniques are presented to uh, softening the water. Okay, by simple filtration, we can't remove the, these salts from the hardness containing water. See, what is the need of softening of water? What is the purpose we have to need? What is the purpose? We have to need, we have to filter the or we have to convert the uh, hard water into the soft water. See, it is very essential process since hard water is unsuitable for domestic as well as industrial use. It is very essential process means softening is the very essential, essential process and hard water is unsuitable because hard water is unsuitable for both domestic as well as industrial use. We can't use the hard water for the domestic purpose and industrial purpose. So, we have to do softening. Okay. One of the most important application of water is the steam production for the generation of electricity. One of the most important application of water is the steam production or electricity production of water. In the first, we have from by using water, we have to produce steam generation and then from the steam, uh, the electricity will be produced. For this water need to be fed to bias. For this, the water need to be fed to bias. Okay. Treatment of boiler feed water. Treatment of boiler feed water. The hard water using in boilers creates large number of problems like corrosion, scale and sludge formation. The water, the hard water, if you use for the electricity generation, okay, if you use hard water, the boiler creates a large number of problems. What are the problems like? Corrosion and scale and sludge formation. This type of formations takes place in if you take hard water in the boilers. Okay, na? For the electricity generation, if you use hard water, okay, in case of soft water, if you use hard water, these are the problems occurs like corrosion, scale, and sludge formation takes place in the boilers. The treatment of water includes the removal of hardness causing salts either by precipitation or by complex formation. The treatment of water means the softening of water includes the Removal of hardness causing salts, removal of hardness causing salts either by precipitation process or by complex formation process. We can remove the hardness causing salt present in the water by different techniques like precipitation process or complex formation process. There are two types of treatments. There are two types of treatments present in the boiler feed water. See, first one is external treatment and second one is internal treatment. There are two types of treatment are present in the boiler feed water. One is external treatment of water and second one is internal treatment of water. See, the external treatment of water. In the first one, external treatment of water. The treatment given to water for the removal of hardness causing salts before it is taken to the boiler is called external treatment of water. What is external treatment of water? The treatment given to water for the removal of hardness causing salts before it is taken into the boiler is called external treatment of water okay before uh, hard wa before water taking into the boiler if you treat that water that process is called external treatment okay before the before the water taking into the boilers okay we have to soften soft the water okay that process is called external treatment of the water the treatment is given to the water the treatment given to the water for the removal of hardness causing salts before it is taken into the Boilers is called external treatment of water. This treatment prevents the boiler problems. This treatment prevents the boiler problems because before say water sending into the 
boilers we have to treat that water so this treatment prevents the boiler problems it can be done by means external treatment can done by lime soda zeolite and iron exchange process the external treatment can be done by by using lime soda process zeolite process and iron exchange process what is internal treatment external treatment nothing but the treatment given to the water uh, uh, for the removal of hardness causing salts before it taken into the boilers okay na what about internal treatment internal treatment thing but internal treatment for boilers feed water refers to the conditioning of water in the boiler itself by the addition of chemicals okay in in external treatment or uh, before water taking into the boilers we have to treat that that process called external treatment but internal treatment okay internal treatment nothing but after water taking into the boilers by applic by addition of chemicals we can remove the or uh, we, we have to treat the water that treatment is called internal treatment inside the boilers if you treat the water that uh, uh, the process is called internal treatment this is essentially corrective method to remove those salts which are not completely removed by external treatment of water softening okay if external treatment if you use if external treatment nothing but the treatment of water before taking into the boilers okay if after external treatment if any salts present in the water uh, okay that water sending into the boilers okay inside the boilers if you treat the water if any if any uh, salts present in the water after the external treatment we can removed by internal treatment method by adding some chemical substances okay the conditioning methods used in internal treatment are colloidal phosphate colgan and carbonate conditioning the conditioning methods these are the conditioning methods what are the internal treatment conditioning methods are colloidal and phosphate colgan and carbonate conditioning methods these methods will be used for the internal treatment of the water see ion exchange process and demineralization and deionization process both these three are same okay ion exchange process nothing but demineralization process nothing but deionization deionization process these are the example for the external treatment of the water these are comes under external treatment of the water means before uh, taking the water into the boilers okay na we have to treat the water that process called external treatment okay na the these are the example for the external treatment what is that ion exchange process or demineral demineralization process or deionization process see in this method ion exchange reagents are used as softening materials in this method we have to use ion exchange reagents for the softening softening of the water okay in this process cations cations nothing but calcium magnesium and anions nothing but chloride and sulfate ions are removed by cation exchange reagents and anion exchange reagents by using cation exchange reagents we can separate the cations by using anion exchange reagents we can separate the anions present in the water okay at the end of the process outcomes water does not possess any type of ions means deionized water at the end of the process outcome outcome water resultant uh, filtered water do not does not possess any type of ions it does not contain any type of ions means we get deionized water by using ion exchange reagents we can get the deionized water means the water which should not contain any ions okay na that called deionized water ion exchange reagents what are the ion exchange reagents ion exchange reagents see ion exchange reagents are insoluble the ion exchange reagents are insoluble in water and these are cross linked the these are the example for the cross linked polymers and long chain organic polymers the ion exchange reagents are long chain organic polymers with a micropore structures the these polymers contain some type of micropores present on the surface of the reagents okay na these are the characteristics for the ion exchange reagents what are the ion exchange reagents ion exchange reagents are insoluble and cross linked and long chain organic polymers with a micropore structures the functional groups attached to the chains are responsible for the ion exchanging properties the functional groups which are present on the surface of the resins okay na the, those are reason for the ion exchanging properties okay na the functional groups which are present on the surface of the polymers those are responsible for the ion exchanging properties see the ion exchange resins are classified into two types the ion exchange resins are classified into two types what are they mean see cation exchange resins and anion exchange resins the ion exchange resins are classified into two types first one is cation exchange resin and second one is 
and an exchange region. The cation exchange region is denoted by R minus and H plus. The cation exchange region is denoted by R minus and H plus. As well as anion exchange region is uh, denoted by R plus and OH minus ions. Okay, the anion exchange region is denoted by R plus and OH minus ions. See, cation exchange regions nothing but R minus H plus. We can denote it by R minus H plus. Nothing but cation exchange region. A uh, cation exchanges are capable of exchanging their H plus ions with cations of dissolved salts. If the water contain, okay, if water containing any Positively charged ions means cations present in water. Those are replaced by the H plus ions present on the these cation exchange regions. The H plus ions are capable of exchanging the ions present in the cations present in the water. Okay, the cation exchange region, a cation exchange are capable of exchanging the H plus ions with cations dissolved in the salt. These H plus ions are capable of replace the cations present in the water. Okay, which comes in their contact. When the positive ions are comes in contact with this resin, the cation exchanges are represented by general formula R H or mainly styrene divinyl benzene copolymers containing the functional group COOH and SO3H. Means the cation exchange resin contains these are the functional groups. What are those functional groups? One is carboxylic acid and second one is sulfonic acids. The cation exchange resin contains. These are the function groups. C double bond O is nothing but carboxylic acid function group or sulfonic acid function group. The carboxylic acid means C double bond O O H means here O minus H plus ions can form. So this H plus ion can capable of replace the positive ions or cations present in the water. Okay. Similarly, sulfonic acid. Sulfonic acid nothing but H double bond O O minus H plus. This H plus ions reason for the uh, exchanging the capable Exchange the capable property of the this functional group. Okay, R is the general structure of resin and H is exchangeable with cation. Here the H plus ions are exchanged with cations. Examples: sulfonated coals and sulfonated polystyrene. These are the example for the cation exchange resins. See, this is the structure for cationic exchange resin. This is the polymer. Okay, this is the polymer. This is SO3 minus H plus and SO3 minus H plus. These are these are the functional groups present on the cation exchange resin. Okay, this is the example for cation exchange resin. This cation exchange resin contain the functional group sulfonic acid. Here the H plus ion is capable of exchange the positive ions present in the water. Okay, see anion exchange resin or R plus OH minus. We can represent it with R plus and OH minus ion. And an exchange resin. Cation exchanges are capable of exchanging their OH minus ions with cations of the dissolved salts. Sorry, anions. Anions of the dissolved salts. Cation exchanges are sorry, anions. Anion exchanges are capable of exchanging their OH minus ions with anions of the dissolved salts, which comes in their contact. Here, the OH minus ions present in the present on the surface of the polymer. Okay, polymer or resin. Okay, these are the reason for the exchanging. Okay, exchanging the negative ions or anions present in the water means the OH minus ions replace the uh, anions present in the water. Okay, when they which are comes with which, which comes in their contact. Okay, na? if the 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 water contact with these ion exchange regions means the OH minus ions present in these anion exchange regions replaced by the the anions present in the water. Okay. The cation exchanges are represented by general formula R plus OH minus. The anion exchange, sorry, the anion, the anion exchange regions are represented by R plus OH minus. The these are the functional groups present on the anion exchange regions. What are those functional groups? See, the ROH means alkylic function group means and RS and RNH2. These are the functional groups are uh, present on the anion exchange regions. Cross-linked quaternary ammonium salts and urea formaldehyde resins. These are the example for the anion exchange resins. See, this is the anion exchange resin. Here, NMe2OH- means quaternary ammonium salts. These are the functional group present on the. Uh, these are the functional group present on the polymer or resin is called ion exchange resins. In this, the functional group is 
quaternary ammonium salt. Here the OH minus ions. Okay, this OH minus is reason for the exchange of anions present in the water. Okay. See here the water, the cationic resin. Here the anionic resin. Okay. Here we are taking cationic resin. Here we are taking anionic resin. We are sending water with. For the water contain calcium chloride means one Ca plus two positive ion R cation and Cl minus anion. First we have to send this the calcium chloride contain water. This calcium chloride water containing water uh, we have to send into the cation exchange resin. Okay. Here the the cation exchange resin contain H plus ions. Okay. The cation exchange resin contain H plus ions. These H plus ions are replaced the the Ca plus two ions present in the water. Okay. The Ca plus two ions are Replaced by the these H plus ions. Okay, then the only it is sent the after filtering. Okay, now after the outcome is the the water does not contain any cations. Means the water contain only Cl minus ions. Okay, now after then we have to send into the anionic resin. The anionic resin nothing but it contains OH minus ions. Okay, now these OH minus ions replace the Cl minus ions present in the water. In cation exchange resin, the cations are separated. In anion exchange resin, the anions present in the water are separated. The resultant, the H plus and OH minus ions comes out from this water. Okay, the Ca plus two attached to the this cation exchange resin and the Cl minus the anions present in the water are at attached to the anion exchange resin. Here, the H plus ions and OH minus ions are comes out. Those those will form water. Okay, this is the process present in the Ion exchange resin. See here, this is the cation exchange resin. Here, anion exchange resin. Okay. First, if you send raw water into the cation exchange resins, if raw water contain any cations, okay, positively charged ions, those are separated in the cation exchange resins. Okay. The resultant water only it contains negative ions. Okay, na the cations are separated by here cation exchange resins. Or cations present in the water are attached to the Cation exchanger. The outcome water contains only negatively charged ions. Okay, these negatively charged ions of containing water then send into the anionic exchange resin. These ion anion exchange resins. These are OH minus ions are replaced with the the, C, the negative ions are present in the water. So here all the negative ions present in the water are separated in anion exchange resin. Okay, all negative ions negative charged ions are Attracted by the anion exchange resins, only here OH minus ions comes out. Here H plus ions are comes out. These together form water. Okay. Then outcome the water which does not contain any positively charged and negatively charged ions. Only the pure form of water will comes out. Okay. This is the process of ion exchange resin process or deionization reionization process. See, these are the reactions involved in the uh, ion exchange process. In cation exchange resin, the cation exchange resin nothing but that uh, formula is R minus H plus. Here H plus ions are replaceable. Okay, when this water contain calcium and magnesium salts, means the water contain any hardness means calcium and magnesium salts. This these the water contain calcium and magnesium positive charges means cations. If water contain any type of cations, those are reacts with these cationic exchange resins. Okay, these reacts with cation exchange resins. Here the H plus ions replaced with Ca plus two ions means Ca plus two ions uh, reacts with two R minus ions forms R two Ca. It forms R two Ca and it releases two H plus ions. Similarly, the magnesium plus ions present in the water those are reacts with the cation exchange resin. It forms R two Mg and releases two H plus ions. Okay, these are the chemical reactions involved in the cation exchange resin. In anionic exchange resin, in case of anionic exchange resins, the the structure of anionic exchange resin is two R plus and OH minus two R plus and OH minus ions. Okay, now if water contain any negative ions like chloride and S sulfate ions, okay, now those are reacts with these anionic exchange resins. Okay, the OH minus ions replace with Cl minus forms two Cl minus reacts with this anionic exchange resin forms RCl and releases. Two OH minus ions. The Cl minus reacts with the anion exchange resins. It forms RCl and produces two OH minus ions. Similarly, the sulfate ions present in the water reacts with two RCl means anion exchange resin forms sulfates. Okay, now R two SO four and it releases two OH minus ions. 
these are the chemical reactions involved in the anion exchange region see after several days after several days if you use uh, the anionic and cation exchange reagents for several times or several uh, several days okay what happens all the ca play, all the positively charged ions are attached to the cation exchange reagents and the all negative ions are attached to the uh, anion exchange reagents there is no possibility for the uh, replacing h plus ions after several days so all the uh, the resins are exhausted okay after several days the re, the after several days the resins will be exhausted so we have to regenerate those resins see how we can regenerate those regeneration of exhausted resins okay after several days uh, after several days after several times of usage of uh, resins the resin, the ex, resins will be exhausted so we have to regeneration of exhausted resins see uh, what is the process involved the saturated cation exchanger is gotten back by passing dilute hcl the saturated cation exchanger is gotten back by passing dilute hcl solution okay see r2ca means the resin is saturated with positively charged ions if you send dilute hcl means dilute sulfuric acid again it form 2rh and cacl2 again 2r is nothing but this is the cation exchange resin again it will form cation exchange resin after saturation of exchange ex saturated of cation exchange resin if you send dilute hcl to the uh, cation exchange saturated then it produces the cation exchange resin with it formation of calcium chloride similarly if the cation exchange resin is saturated with magnesium salts if you send dilute hcl to that uh, saturated cation exchange that will form the cation exchange resin pure uh, first uh, instead of uh, the, the pure form of uh, cation exchange resin will form and it uh, result magnesium chloride the calcium chloride and magnesium chloride are removed by washing these uh, these are the precipitate okay now we can remove by using simple by washing okay the saturated anionic exchanger is gotten back by passing dilute nio solution the saturated anionic exchanger is gotten back by passing dilute NaOH solution. See, RCl means all the chloride ions are attached to the negatively uh, negatively uh, or anion exchange resin. So, these are saturated type of anion exchange resin. Okay, the the regeneration of exhausted resin uh, by using dilute NaOH. If you send NaOH to the this uh, saturated anion exchange resin, it forms ROH. ROH is nothing but R plus OH minus. Other name of the anion exchange resin means the anion exchange resin is regenerated the anion exchange resin is regenerated by using passing naoh to the the saturated anionic exchanger okay that results nsl sodium chloride will be resultant product and similarly the negatively charged anionic exchanger means sulfate these are here the sulfate ions are saturated with this anion exchanger resin so these the anion exchange resin in this case regenerated by using sending NaOH. If you send NaOH to this, this anion exchange resin, it forms ROH. ROH means this is this is the anion exchange resin regenerated form, and it uh, produces the Na2SO4 salt. It, the product will be the sodium sulfate salt. The NaCl and Na2SO4 means sodium chloride and sodium sulfate are removed by washing. And the general, the regenerated, the generated, the generated, the regenerated ion exchanger can be used again. Okay, now after regeneration, again we can use this cation and anion exchange resins for the ion exchanging process. Thus, the water coming out from the anion and cation exchangers is free from both cations and anions. The water coming out from the anion and cation exchange resins is free from both cations and anions the outcome water it does not contain any cations and anions this water is known as ion free water or deionized water or demineralized water this water is known as ion free water and also we can as deionized water and we can also call as demineralized water advantages what are these advantages present in the deionized water see it produces water hardness is very low means it 2 ppm Okay, na? the hardness water after uh, if you the outcome water contain the hardness of water is 2 ppm less than 
2 ppm means it produces very low hardness okay the outcome water content very low hardness okay this process can remove both anions and cations by using this ion exchange resin process we can remove the both anions and cations present in the water it can be also used to soften high acid or basic hard water it by using this ion exchange resin process we can we can soften the water before water contain high acid and basic nature containing okay na it can also removes the cations and present anions present in the water and also we can uh, soften the water which contain high acidic nature and high basic uh, nature containing water what are the disadvantages present in the this ion exchange resin process see equipment chemical resins are more expensive expensive the chemicals which are used in this uh, ion exchange process ion exchange process is uh, the resins which are used for the this ion exchange uh, resin process are more expensive the resins are more expensive so this uh, this process is uh, related to the more expensive process these are the advantages present in the ion exchange resin process thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates